Welcome, everybody. This is Your Catholic Faith Reloaded, episode number three. I'm your host, Father Nelson Medina, broadcasting from Bogota, Colombia, South America. It's a great pleasure to be here, and thank you for coming on. My friends, what do we do here? We take a great resource that was made publicly available by the Joan of Arc Catholic Parish in Indianapolis, and we follow along because this is like going to the basics, back to the basics of our Catholic faith. We do not enter into too much detail, but definitely we get the fundamentals to appreciate a little more our Catholic faith and also to learn to share our faith with others because this is a great act of love. So uh, let's go there. Here we have our text and also our biblical quotations. Last time we left off under this heading, Truth According to Jesus. And we were, we were reading along uh, John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Now we continue with John chapter 17, verse 17. Uh, let me uh, offer to you a bit of context. Chapter 17 of the gospel according to John is, uh, is a prayer. Actually, it's a prayer that our Lord makes um, addressing the Father and begging mercy for us and at the same time giving testimony of the great glory of the sacrifice that was about to happen on the cross. In this context, the Lord says the word that we find in verse 17. We go there, here we have the quotations. In John 17, verse 17, we find, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Sanctify them by the truth. I suppose most of us are not accustomed to relate, to connect, to be saints and to be true and to be truthful. So um, this is a great sentence. Sanctify them by the truth. There's no possibility, not whatsoever possibility of reaching authentic sanctity, true union with God without truth. And also the second part, your word is truth, which means that we have to come back again and again to the word of God in order to learn the basics about who we are and who God is. Of course, our reason can reach some aspects of this truth, but in order to receive what we need, our own reason, is not enough. We need an act of humbleness here because this is to remember that our own reason is not enough. We continue. The truth is liberating, liberating. You want deliverance? You want true freedom? Okay, you need the truth. And we are invited to go again to the gospel according to John, this time chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. And here they are. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, will set you free. Two aspects have to be underlined in this short text. First, 
if we are to call ourselves disciples of Jesus Christ, there is a clear condition here to hold his teaching. Our religion, our relationship with God is not something that we simply create or imagine. True religion is not the fruit of your imagination. True religion is about holding the teachings of Jesus Christ and being faithful to everything that he has taught us. Second, he says, you will know the truth, holding his teaching. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We'll come back to that just in a minute. The truth demands obedience. John chapter 14, verse 15. I hope we have this here. If you love me, keep my commands. It's not simply loving Jesus. It's not simply some warm feeling that you have within you. If you love me, it is the Lord who speaks. Keep my commands. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. So there is a, a relationship, there is a link, a clear link and connection between knowing, obeying, and doing. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. Perhaps some will find this kind of teaching a bit strict or, uh, you know, when you feel that you have no room to act. But it's exactly the opposite. When you go to the physician, you receive commands and they are liberating because they are for the good of your health and you obey them. If your physician tells you, please, you have to stop. You got to stop eating this and this and this. You take that seriously. And you don't think that your physician is hating you or is restricting you in a bad manner. What you understand is that this is for your good. And you leave that office of the physician grateful. And of course, you have to pay a bill. My father, says Jesus, will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. There's no more profound relationship with God than being in love with him. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the father who sent me. So we are, we are taught to be obedient to Jesus all the same as he is obedient to the Father. To be obedient to the Father. If you see the other way around, what this means is that the will of God, which is full of wisdom, and bounteousness and, 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 and beauty is projected and is expressed in the life of Jesus. And the same will of God comes to us and, so to speak, wishes to be expressed in our own lives. From God to Jesus and from Jesus to us, the transmission of the will of God, again, from us to Jesus' obedience, from Jesus to the Father, obedience, and all, everything is connected with truth. 
next time we will talk a little bit about to the situation in our own culture and we will talk about the anti-truth culture that most probably you and i are living in so thank you for being here and i invite you to continue this simple catholic formation because this is your catholic faith reloaded <laughs>